Dave knows how. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to do a little bit of tractor maintenance. We are going to adjust the pivot bolt on the front axle of this Kubota tractor. So this is the L2800 Kubota tractor, but this procedure is more likely the same on pretty much any of the L series tractors. Maybe even some of the B series tractors and some of the M series tractors as well. I'm not sure. Not 100% sure, so consult your owner's manual. So, the bolt is located on the front of the axle and you access it through the front. You don't have to get underneath between the front and rear wheels. Um, you know, for we're not going to get into the whole safety sally stuff about chocking the wheels and setting the emergency brake and all that kind of hoopla. Now in the manual, in the shop manual, it doesn't say anything about raising the front wheels off the ground to do this. But I just feel a little bit better about taking the load off of the front axle by using the front end loader and raising the front wheels up off the ground. Is that the right thing to do? The wrong thing to do? I have no idea. This is just how I'm going to do it. In my mind, I feel more comfortable taking the load off of the front axle so that I can tell when that bolt is all the way down. So the procedure is to loosen up the locking nut and then screw in the bolt all the way until it touches and then back it out one sixth of one turn. Now that's kind of an odd number, one sixth of an odd turn, you know, of a full turn. But an easy way to figure out how to do that is to look at the bolt head. The bolt head has six sides. So if your bolt head is right here, straight up and down on, on one side of it, if you rotate that thing around so that the next piece that's on the angle is now straight, that's one sixth of a turn. That's simple enough. So it's pretty, pretty easy to do. So let's get busy, get over here, loosen up this nut, adjust that bolt, and do some neglected maintenance. This was supposed to be done at 600 hours. I did not do it. We're over a thousand hours now. The characteristics of it being out of adjustment is vibration in the steering wheel on the front end. I'm not feeling any, any of that, at least not any severe amount that's going to make it that noticeable for me. But I'm at a thousand hours and the book recommends 600 hours. <laughs> I'd say it probably needs adjusting, so we're going to go ahead and adjust it. Um, last week, I decided to adjust my brakes. Um, I had never adjusted the brakes, and I've had this tractor since it had 100 hours on it, and now it's got over 1,000. Um, it was a bit out of adjustment, <laughs> to say the least. The parking brake would no longer hold. When you push, push the brake down and locked it in the park, it would no longer hold. So it was that far, you know, out, out of adjustment. So I guess the point is, is you kind of need to pay attention to these things because if you don't, time will go on and it just won't get done. All right, enough of the rattling on. Let's get down here and get on this thing. It takes a 14 millimeter and a 17 millimeter to do this. And the first thing we're supposed to do is break this nut loose. If that 
did it. Oh yeah, that broke it loose. So we got that nut broke loose. And now we're gonna tighten this up. I'm gonna take notice to where this thing is at. So we got the we got the flat at the top. So I'm gonna turn it in and see just how far in it goes. We need we need to loosen up this back one a little bit, just so we can see how far in it goes. So let's see. That's one six. That's two six. That's three six. But it's kind of tight. It's four six. That's five six. That's a whole turn. That's a whole turn right there. Kind of tight though, I'm not sure. I guess that's the end of it right there, huh? Yeah, so now the flat is on the side right here. So if I turn this until this top flat, well, this side flat right there is on the side. And that should be. Where it needs to be at. Right there. That should be one sixth of a turn. Okay. And then. Tighten this jam nut back up. So, okay, and I think while we're here, we'll go ahead and grease this thing too. Now, there's a grease fitting right here, okay, but on the other side, there's a bolt, like a square head plug is what it really is, not a bolt, but a plug. That plug <coughs> needs to come out before you grease this. So you unscrew this out and then you put grease in here until the grease comes out of this plug hole. If you don't do that, it will blow the seal out of this thing. So I'm gonna go grab the grease gun and a wrench and we'll take that off. Okay, so that that wrench feels like a seven millimeter is what seems to fit this. Let me grab a grease gun. This is the bolt right here that comes out. This seven millimeter wrench fits it. Probably most people just use an adjustable on it. But you, you got to take this out. That's really important. And then we're going to... So we got that out of there. Now we're going to hook up this grease gun.
And you see we got grease coming out of the right here. So that seal is already busted, more likely. So if we go directly behind here, there's also grease fitting right there. So we're gonna hook up to that. And there's there's no nut to take out on this side. So I'm thinking that that same nut. <laughs> bag in there. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, hey, what kind of grease you use? Well, any grease is better than no grease, okay? And I don't know about you guys, but right now for me, grease is hard to find. I mean, the grease I used to like to use, which was the Lucas grease, you can't hardly get it anywhere around here for some reason. I don't know why. Blame it on COVID, I guess. They blame everything on COVID. Why not? All right, there you go. We got it um, adjusted. You know, what does that adjustment do? It actually preloads the front end. That front end is moving this way. And without the proper preload, it will move this way. Okay? You know, this is an exaggerated amount. We don't want that whole axle moving this way. You know, it's one thing for the wheels to turn this way like that but we don't want the whole axle turning this way and that's an exaggerated amount right there it's actually just a very little can't even see it but that little bit causes vibration in the steering wheel it causes excessive wear on the tires it puts a lot of strain on the front axle and the front wheel assist on a front wheel assist or four wheel drive tractor i don't like to call them four wheel drive tractors because they're really not I don't see them as four-wheel drive tractors. I see them as front-wheel assist. 99.9% .9 of the time, this tractor is in two-wheel drive. I try to stay out of four-wheel drive as much as possible. When I need it, it's there, and I sit four-wheel drive again. Um, I try to stay out of front-wheel assist. When I need it, it's there, but most of the time, I try not to need it. I don't know why. I, I try not to be out here when it's a muddy mess. Oh, uh, trying to get things done. You know, in the wintertime, if it's snow and it's and, and I've got to do that, then of course I'm gonna be in front wheel assist. But for the most part, all the stuff I'm doing, moving all this dirt and everything, two wheel drive. Um even You'll probably see in some future videos uh, that I've already already shot of running the uh, road blade and, and cutting in this roadway back here or walkway or whatever you want to call it. Um, I think majority of that was done in, in two-wheel drive. I, I don't even think... I mean, I'll have to go back and look, but... I'm fairly certain that most of that was done in two-wheel drive, believe it or not. Um, if, I, if I get under a heavy load on a gravel driveway and I'm going uphill, then sometimes I do have to put it in the uh, front-wheel assist. I almost said four-wheel drive again. <laughs> all right, anyway, all that's done. Preload is set on that. Should be good for another 600 hours give or take 
hopefully I adjusted it correctly. It said turn it all the way down till it stops, and I turned it all the way down till it stopped. The only thing I did do different was I raised the front wheels off the ground with the front end loader, simply because I felt more comfortable getting a more accurate preload with all the weight off the front axle. That way I knew the front axle wasn't in a bind or anything else. And we also greased that joint and the joint behind there. You know, those are two more joints that typically get overlooked. But now you've seen me actually do it, so maybe it'll inspire you to go do yours. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> Who knows? Anyhow, I guess that's it for this video. I appreciate you guys well, uh, watching and being here. I uh, just can't thank you enough. And um, I guess I'll catch you in the next video. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.